Hey guys, what's up and welcome to iCode, 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 iCode. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the exercise file that I provided you in the last video on the topic numbers in Python. So let's get started. So let me just show you where I saved my exercise file. So I saved my file in this particular folder, iCode. So let me just double tap on that and tap on Python exercise file. So here is my exercise file. Okay, cool. So let me just close this and tap on terminal. So to open Jupyter notebook and guys, if you're using windows, you're going to be using what is called as command prompt, not terminal command prompt. Okay, cool. Fine. So type in Jupyter notebook enter. So let me just tap on desktop, I code, Python, exercise files, and this is my exercise file. So tap on that. And this is the exercise file for the topic numbers in Python. So let me just start with the question number one. So what type of numbers are the following? And the hint is determine if they are integers or floating point numbers. So basically you are given a number and you have to say whether it is an integer or floating point number. Got it? Cool. So let's start with 1.0. So guys, in the last video, I've told you that if a number has a decimal part, it's a floating point number, right? Yes. So 1.0 is a floating point number and I've already provided the solution for that as an example. Cool. So let's move on. So what type of number is 899? double eight one eight so it doesn't have any decimal part so obviously it is an integer so let me just double tap on this cell so to edit this cell and write integer and guys if you remember in the last video i've told you that you can take help of python so to find if a number is an integer or floating point number by using what is called as type let me just show you how to use it once again so tap on this cell this particular cell and I'm going to insert another cell below. So insert cell below and right here, I'm going to use that particular type and inside the bracket, I'm going to put 1.0 and run this cell. And you can see that this is a floating point number and that is what answer is here. So 1.0 is a floating point number. That's it. And coming to this one, let me just tap on this and insert a cell below and right here type 899818 and run the cell and obviously you can see that the number is an integer cool so let's go for the next one so minus 4 doesn't have any decimal part so it is an integer and coming to the next one this is pretty tricky guys if you remember in the last video I've told you that e here is nothing but 10 right so this is basically 156 into 10 power 3 okay so guys, do one thing. So tap on this cell and run this cell. So shift plus enter. And you can see that this number is 156,000.0. So it has a decimal part. That means it's a floating point number. And guys, even you can run this particular cell. So minus four is just minus four. So coming to the question number two, here we need to find the sum of 188994 and 17737. So all we got to do is find sum of two numbers. So 188994 plus 17737 and run the cell and there you go. 206731 and I hope that is what the answer you got. So moving on to question number three, find the difference between 198 and 87. So all we got to do is use the minus operator. So 198 minus 87, run the cell and triple one is the answer. And next we got to find the product. So we're going to use what is called as asterisk operator for multiplication. Okay. So 11 into 11, it should be 121. And obviously the answer is 121. Next we got to divide 15 by 6. So all you got to do is 15 and use the division operator is this one and six so run the cell and the answer is 2.5 great moving on to question number six what is six to the power of nine 
so we need to use the power operator that is two asterisks beside each other so six to the power of nine so run the cell and the answer is one double zero double seven six nine six great so question number seven what is the square root of nine so let me just add a cell here between this particular two cells so insert a cell below so basically square root of any number is nothing but that particular number to the power of 1 by 2 so basically say that the number is x so square root of x is nothing but x to the power of 1 by 2 which is nothing but x to the power of 0 0.5 okay so run the cell so 9 to the power of 0 0.5 run the cell and the answer is 3.0 which is correct and moving on to question number 8 we need to find the cube root of 27 so square root means x to the power of 1 by 2 and cube root means x to the power of 1 by 3 so all you got to do is 27 to the power of 1 by 3 and run the cell well the output is 9.0 which is wrong oh my god what the hell happened okay let me just explain you what happened so basically python was performing 27 to the power of 1 first and later it was performing the division so let me just uh, insert an another cell below and make this a markdown cell so basically python was performing 27 to the power of 1 first which is 27 of course and later it was performing the division so 27 divided by 3 which is 9 and that is the reason we got this output as 9.0 but what do we want we want the division to be performed first right we want this particular thing to be performed first and later this particular power operator so all you need to do is enclose this 1 divided by 3 in a bracket so like this enclose this in brackets so now what happens is first the division operator gets executed and only after that this particular power comes into play so guys remember this in python whenever you enclose something in brackets that gets executed first and only after that it will execute all the other ones okay so now let me just run this again and see if we got the right answer so run this cell and there you go we got the right answer that is 3.0 and moving on to the next question divide 5 by 0 okay so all you got to do is use the division operator so 5 by 0 execute the cell and obviously we should get an error and we got the error you can't divide any number by zero it's undefined and the name of the error is zero division error okay cool so the question number 10 is what was the name of the error that you incurred in the question number nine and that's nothing but zero division error so let me just edit this and put the answer here great so coming to the next question which of the following names for a variable are invalid so guys if you remember in the last video i've told you some of the rules that you should remember when you are creating variables when you are naming variables you remember that great so let's answer this question so coming to the first one 23 square which is invalid because you can't name a variable starting with a number so this is invalid so obviously one is invalid and the reason is can't start with a number now coming to the next one my underscore name which is valid so it's not the answer five dollars which is of course invalid you can't use a space while naming your variables so that's an invalid naming so let me just write that answer right here so copy paste and three is invalid and the reason is can't use a space great now coming to the fourth one i code 54 which is valid and coming to the fifth one i code underscore at the rate to one which is invalid i've told you that you can't use any special character while naming a variable so that's an invalid one so let me just write that answer here so five can't use a special character 
and coming to the last one that is underscore it which is a valid one i told you that you can use underscore so it's a valid one so these are the answers that is that is one three and five so let me just execute this cell great and now coming to the twelfth question that is store a value of six in a variable named i code so all you got to do is i code use the assignment operator so that you can store a value in a variable so equals to six execute the cell and now coming to the 13th question it's asking you to print the value of i code so that you know you can just confirm whether six is stored in that particular variable or not so let me just print i code so i code run the cell and you can see that i code has a value of six great and now coming to the 14th question what happens if we assign 10 to the variable i code again will it give an error or will it replace the value of i code so guys if you remember in the last video i've told you that the value gets replaced so obviously i code will be having 10 if you store 10 even though it had a value of 6 before okay great so run the cell and now coming to the 15th question assign value of 10 to i code so the same thing that is i code is equals to 10 run the cell and print the value of i code so that we can just confirm if it has 10 so i code and of course it has a value of 10 now and coming to the 17th question store a value of i code into 5 in i code so i code is equals to i code into 5 that's it i code into 5 so run the cell and print the value of i code so i code run the cell and there you go you got the answer as 50 great and now let's add two variables now create a variable named python with a value of 100 so python is equals to 100 great and now what you got to do is find the sum of two variables that is i code and python so i code plus python which is nothing but 100 plus 50 that is 150 and there you go the answer is 150 and finally the last question what will be the value of i code after the following cell is executed so guys in the last video i've told you that the value of any variable can only be changed can only be manipulated using the assignment operator that is equal to operator you remember that great so basically here all we are doing is i code minus 45 that is 50 minus 45 we are not using any assignment operator here so the value of i code remains same that is 50 so let me just edit this and write here that i code value will remain same that is 50 great so guys hope you all got the same answers as mine and also hope you had fun doing this exercise we're going to be doing exercises for all the topics in python so probably tomorrow or day after tomorrow i'm going to be uploading a video on strings in python so stay tuned for that if you have any doubt in any part of this exercise file just come to the slack channel put your question there and i'll be there to answer and guys guess what we have got 66 i coders in a slack channel so i advise you to join here so that's it guys that's it for this video i'll be back with the next video so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and till next time see ya